Gary Hart, he was working. Gary Hart's entire public persona mm -hmm. was that he was a person who was evil and insidious and crooked and a backstabber and, and totally without any redeeming quality whatsoever. And that's what you said in those days. To you, if you said Junkyard Dog was a nappy-haired character, you'd get the black folks mad. And if you said that Dick Murdoch was no good because he was married to a Mexican, you got the Mexicans mad. Gary Hart grew up in a horrible, rough neighborhood on the south side of Chicago with blacks and Mexicans and Hispanics and, and mob guys. Mm -hmm. And he was at home with all those people. He worked in Texas for years, and, and he was behind the scenes. He was... Although he still had an air of shadiness to him because he had that classic face. It was Uncle Gary, and he fostered and developed talent. He didn't mean that shit, but that's what you said in those days to get heat. And how did those comments get on the air? It wasn't like today where you couldn't say that shit. I one time in Mid-South in Louisiana, Bill Watts told me when we were wrestling Coco Ware in Norvell Austin, say, we're going to run you out of town on a rail of tarred and feathered so you'll get a taste of what your grandparents got. And I said one time I stole a line from Jerry Lawler, we're going to read you Roots backwards so it has a happy ending. That didn't mean I meant it. We were trying to get heat. Today, you said you, you couldn't, couldn't do it. You of course couldn't you couldn't even do it approach today. it. You today. couldn't even approach so it. So for anyone watching who's got a current wrestling sensibility, your current television but sensibility. Gary Hart was able to work even your smart researchers because no, that wasn't him. He didn't mean that. He, but he was doing those things to get heat because Gary Hart, the public persona, was completely devoid of any redeeming quality and was evil and bad to the core.